It looks burnt. No, it's not burnt, mate. It's supposed to look like that. Nice and charred. Burnt. No, it's not burnt. Just right. It doesn't it look burnt. Shh, it's fine. Okay, today we are going to be making chicken with stuff. And we're going to start by opening up the chicken with my big knife. I'm not going to be using all of this. I'm only going to be using one chicken breast today. And I've already made a mistake. I should have turned on the hob. Now I'm using the hand that I haven't just touched the chicken with. I'm going to turn it onto seven. And in a minute, after I've chopped this chicken very quickly, I'm going to get some coconut oil in there. Otherwise, my pan's going to start burning. This is the first time I have ever recorded myself cooking. And it's very strange. It's very weird. And no doubt I'm going to end up chopping my finger off and waffling right that's that done wash hands which you can't see i'm trust me i'm over here at the sink washing my hands right coconut oil very tasty stuff yeah when you're cooking chicken with stuff that's what you want now i don't put much on just a little bit i'm also going to get the other pan the small pan heated up so a little bit more coconut oil there first of all before i do anything i'm going to shove that chicken in that pan it's not the oil hasn't warmed yet it's fine don't worry about it put that knife in the wash and then i'm going to scrub this chopping board like there's no tomorrow chopping board is clean chicken is not cooking yet because the pan's not hot so we're all good we're good to go right tea towel away Chicken spread about a bit. Now, we're gonna grab ourselves some chorizo. We'll chop it like that. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna slice it down the middle lengthways, put it back together again, and then slice it down the middle that way. And then I'm gonna cut it into as small pieces as possible because I like it really hot and burnt and crispy. And you get that the best when it's nice and thin. You do have to watch your fingers a bit with this because it is a bit soft and slidey and it will create a lot of fat as well. Now, coconut oil's started melting in there now, so let's chuck all these bits the chorizo in but i'm not actually going to wash the chopping board this time i'm going to go straight into chopping my vegetables i'm even going to be using the same knife for most of it it's absolutely fine don't worry about it it's the chicken that's the problem next i start with my hardest vegetables and i'm going to be using three tender sweet carrots healthy nice and sweet probably a little bit too much natural sugar in to be fair really do to start moving this chicken around a bit letting that oil get in there getting that a little bit warm and white on all of the sides and then i can turn the heat down on that a little bit once it's starting to brown all over now i try and chop these as finely as possible but i haven't got all day so i it's a bit rough chop the carrot mini Okay, carrot is all chopped. My chorizo is starting to go now. I'll be using this wooden spatula to move that around. You can see already, maybe, possibly, depending on the angle, the oil is starting to come off that chorizo now, making it sort of nice and brown in there. I'm actually gonna turn that up. We want that really hot. We really wanna get that chorizo nice and almost burnt and crispy. And I'm gonna put my carrot straight in there with it to give it the longest opportunity to start cooking and actually getting soft enough through that we're not just breaking our teeth when we're eating this stuff. Shovel my chicken around a little bit. Be careful not to touch it with my fingers, otherwise I have to wash my hands again. Now, we're actually gonna be moving on to tender stem broccoli. Now, realistically, if you were a good chef, what you would probably do is chop off the ends and put them in later so that they've got less time to cook. But I don't care if it all just ends up as a big mess. So I just chop the entire thing as finely as possible. It takes a while for broccoli to actually cook through. And I always leave the end of the stem, that bit. I'm not really bothered about that bit. All right, chuck that straight in there. Let that start cooking as well. You're going to tell us how many weights and grams of the ingredients? No, it doesn't matter. Just chuck it in. Do whatever you feel is about right. Think about how many items you would have on your plate. If you're going to have a plate of food, how many carrots would you put on it? Would you put one? No, that's not enough. Two, maybe. Four, that's probably a bit too much. So we'll put three on. How many bits of broccoli? Well, I want two bits of broccoli on my plate. Okay, well, let's just put two bits of broccoli in here then. But I always portion it as if I was putting the individual pieces on my plate. Looking good. All right, the next thing we're gonna be doing is asparagus. I prefer the skinny stuff. Well, that's all they had at the shop this particular time. And again, I'm gonna chop the stems quite roughly, but the, uh, oh, sorry, the tips, but I'm actually gonna chop the stems as finely as possible because again, I want these to cook through nice and quickly and now these because the big ones and they're probably at the end of their life now they are incredibly tough but they give that nice crunch get all of that whizzing about in there Need a bit of a shuffle spread it out a bit chicken how are you getting on it's getting warm now it's good and i'm not seeing many pink bits of chicken left in there that's good shake it about a bit next i do these in the order of hardest things first basically on the basis that in my mind things that are tougher or harder to cut or basically just thicker are going to take longer to actually 
cut. And I want everything at a sort of similar texture once it's done. I don't want to find really hard things in there that's going to break my teeth as I bite into it. At the same time, I also don't want overly soft things in there. So if I was to put mushrooms in at the start, for instance, they're going to be really soft by the time that's done. And I don't really want soft mushrooms. The only problem with the pepper, if you put it in too early, because it's so wet, because there's so much water in it, it does tend to make everything you're doing a little soggy. So at this point, I really like to make sure that the chorizo that I've got in the pan is actually properly sort of smoky at this point, really. And I'm just cutting this pepper really roughly. And then all I'm going to do is basically just chop it a bit sideways as well, make the pieces a little bit smaller, and then just chuck those in there as well. Here we go, now we'll cook it. Now I'm starting to see that chorizo is getting quite smoky now, and most of the oil has been soaked up by the foods that's in there. So that water from those peppers is actually going to help us a little bit in terms of actually having some sort of sort of base or medium for them to cook. Now this chicken's looking quite well done now. We're looking quite brown on some sides. I'm actually going to turn that down to a four or five and just let that simmer for a bit. And then I'm going to get out some mushrooms. Got these nice big chestnut mushrooms here. And again, I'm not going to worry too much about hand cutting these. If they're too big as well, just chop them up a bit more because you don't want these, again, to be massively overpowering in your meal. And then chuck them in. We've got most of the main ingredients in there now, but it is looking a tad dry. Now, there is a secret ingredient that I often add in here. I wasn't planning on doing it today, but I think I will because it is a bit dry. And that is actually just a little bit of chicken stock. Just turn the heat down a bit because it is a bit, it's a bit keen now. Now, at this point, you might want to consider chucking in a few bits and bobs, maybe a little bit of salt. I would normally put pepper in, but my pepper's all run out. Uh, smoked paprika's a good one, but you don't want to overdo it. But what I particularly like putting in is ground ginger. Oh, and I forgot my red onion. Normally there'd be a whole lot of onion in there as well, and I completely forgot to do it. It's too late to put that in there now. I have to remember to do that one next time. All right, I'm almost finished with my chopping board. I've got one more thing that I'm going to be chopping, and that's just a handful of plum or baby plum tomatoes. Might be a good idea at this point to have a little bit of a tidy up just while those things are simmering and cooking because there's no real rush at this point. We're on our way to a tasty spiffing meal. It looks burnt. No, it's not burnt, mate. It's supposed to look like that. Nice and charred. Burnt. No, it's not burnt. Just right. It doesn't look burnt. Shh, it's fine. Right, before we do anything else then, let's get our very cheaty stock cube out and a mug and open up these awful packets that they're in and try not to break your fingers as you smash it up to get it in the cup to give the water a better chance of getting in there and then wash your hands because you've got bits of that all over it. Then get a fork out. I have previously boiled the kettle, although it doesn't really matter if it's not too hot. And I don't want much water in there at all. Tiny, tiny bit of water, just enough to stir that in. And then put that on top. Nice, let that bubble away. That's just gonna stop things actually burning. And it's just gonna add a little bit of extra salty chickeny flavor in there. Oh, good. All right, speaking of extra salty chickeny flavor, that chicken looks pretty much cooked through to me, probably a little bit more than I would normally like. I'm gonna turn that pan off now and chuck all that in there as well with the oil. Give that a bit of a stir up. And at this point, we're nearly done. Okay, so the last ingredient that we're gonna be cooking or cutting is these plum tomatoes. And I like to go across long ways, and if they're a particularly big one, I'll do them in quarters long ways. Tomatoes, probably one of the best ingredients in the world. Best things for you to eat, really good for your heart. And just the taste of tomatoes, especially baby plum tomatoes, nice and sweet. Really delicate, nice and easy to eat. And there they are, all in. Which means we are done with our chopping board done with absolutely everything apart from one final ingredient which we're going to be chucking on in a minute once those tomatoes add a little bit of chance to just wilt away in there. Now don't cook this for long. You might be thinking, that looks like a big pile of slop and it doesn't look very appetizing at all. Then you'd be right. It is a big pile of slop. And it doesn't look very appetizing at all, but it's very tasty. It's pretty good for you. Okay, so secret ingredient time. Here's one I prepared earlier. It is halloumi. Halloumi, otherwise known as squeaky cheese and a cheese grater. I'm not going to put all of it on, but I'm just going to grate a whole bunch of this halloumi on top of that, what I put in there. And I'm going to be really generous with it because it's very tasty. Again, quite salty though. There's probably quite a lot of salt in this meal. I probably shouldn't have put extra salt on. I wouldn't normally, but I thought it was fancy for the video. And let's just let that melt for a while. Then we'll give it one last stir in a couple of minutes. And it'll be job done. Okay. While that was sizzling away, I've just literally done all of the washing up, wrapped up the chicken and put everything back in the fridge. And now this is a nice sort of sticky, smoky, sizzly 
mess, which is just how I like it. Now, my, you might not want it quite as sticky as this, and trust me, if you put the red onion in there, it's even more sticky because it almost sort of caramelizes a bit. But that, for me, is just about perfect. Now, the only thing left to do is get it in a bowl, which is not the easiest thing to do because, well, it's a big frying pan going into a small bowl. Doesn't look very tasty. Maybe I could present it a little bit better, put some of the chicken on the top, possibly. Mm. It tastes amazing. I guess it's just time to eat it now. Mmm. Mmm. Mmm, that's nice. Mm. Look, the chicken's cooked through, by the way. It's good. 